Harriot, why did you come here this year? What was your mission here? Mainly to arrange a side event about exploring regulation as a tool to promote human rights, health and security in Europe. It was very nice to talk about legal regulation here in the UN building at the CND. It's, it uh, feels groundbreaking. How would you explain to our viewers who have no clue about drug policy reform, why do we need to reform this system? Why do we need regulation? A lot of years we've been discussing decriminalization and I really favor that because we shouldn't treat drug users as criminals. So then we get some destigmatization. We treat them more like people, but still all the drugs are illegal. So they have to go somewhere unsafe to buy them. When it's decriminalized, the police are still going after you, but then you won't get punishment, but you will be forced something else. So that's, that's a good step in one direction, but the big, problem is the organized crime and now we're seeing they are really infecting our economy they are infiltrating political parties in our neighboring countries in european countries we get this mafia situation and this is a critical time i think because the opium production is going is decre uh, decreasing and the cocaine production is increasing very much and this limit of uh, how many people will use heroin. Uh, it's very marginalized people, mostly. And uh, very many people will never use heroin and will never inject a drug. But cocaine, now we're seeing cocaine is going everywhere in the country. And they are tar targeting people out in the cities, young people and so on. So this is a, a lot bigger market. So now we're be beginning to see the same kind of mafia situation that we had during alcohol prohibition 100 years ago. And I think when people see this threat to our democracy, to our societies and to people, then maybe they have to, will start to reconsider because this is not drug liberalism this is just so the state can take control so that those people who use these drugs can get it in a safe environment and not be addicted to a criminal environment and no people that sell illegal drugs that no people have even more it's not good for people to have this to uh, uh, this nice people among them too but when you when you're kind of addicted to have this kind of contact so that you can get what you want then you're influxed in some criminal environment that might not be good for you. And then we have to take control because now it's free flow out in the streets. Police efforts against drug users. We have a lot of science. It does not work. It's been on the front page of Lancet two times. The Office of the High Commission of Human Rights have checked into it and they suggest decriminalization. We have a 416 pages report in Norway did extensive research showing that police actions against drug users does not, does not work. But it does, doesn't work on the, those who's providing the drugs either, or the top people in organized crime. It, it simply doesn't work. So it just makes it worse. So when they crack down on an environment, arrest 30, 40, 50 people, then the next criminal group will get monopoly, m even more money, and even they use even more violence to keep that uh, power that they give. So that's why we have to take control and get the money into the states instead of into uh, organized crime. So what do you say to those people who are saying that, okay, but why do we give drugs to people? Why don't we just treat them, uh, treat addiction? We can invest in addiction treatment and then people will not use drugs. <laughs> I think it's because 90% of those who are using drugs don't have any problems with it. 
Uh, drugs, uh, when they come in the right settings, in the right environments, they have good functions for people, for stabilizing their moods. If you have uh, trauma, if you have some psychic problems, anything, so these drugs can be beneficial to people. And uh, that's why people use it. If you use drugs and people give you problems, uh, then you have drug and problems, drug problems. In Norway, I, society is not so uh, accepting with alcohol neither, right? So, how is, is there is there an argument coming up that so why don't you want to make drugs such as uh, illicit drugs same as alcohol available for legal consumption? Yeah, we want, but but we want it in a Nordic model because in Norway we are restrictive. We are restrictive on alcohol, but then people can buy it. But when we use this regulation, less people use it and they don't use it that much. And we have a split alcohol with beer with 4.7. Everyone can get it in the shops, but you have to go to special shops to get stronger alcohol. And I think that's very good for the public health. And I think we should do the same thing with the other drugs. And it's not exciting. It's not oppositional. It's not like protesting against what you think is unfair in the society. So when it becomes legal, becomes part of the state, it's accepted from the authorities. A lot of functions you now get from using drugs will disappear because it's not that exciting anymore. So it's just when it's criminalized and when it's prohibited that it's exciting for you young people to use drugs like cannabis. Because young people, they want to be where it's happening. They want to be look good and uh, run against each other, dance with each other. They don't want to sit there red in their eyes and dry in the mouth. <laughs> that's not that's not a drug for young people. But when it's uh, prohibited and and criminal, it's so uh, exciting to use cannabis. So when it becomes legal, uh, I think the average age for cannabis will go up to 40, 50 years, and then those people will stop using so much opiates, benzodiazepines, antidepressants, and a lot of medications that, that really isn't good for them, that cannabis can do good instead. So a few years ago, uh, a minister came here to the CND from Norway, speaking about that soon Norway will decriminalize drug use. So what happened since, since then? It was turned down by the, the drug policy reform, was turned down by the uh, parliament, and then we have a new government that opposes decriminalization, but we'll, we will get some kind of drug reform. But it has happened so much in the aftermath of this debate that, we, that, that is uh, normalizing drug users. The court system has looked into it and, and uh, stated that it's pointless to punish people for using drugs. The police are not running after drug users like they did. And they used um, integrity infring infringing measures that was really humiliating. And the police stopped doing that, going into the trousers, mobile by phone, their homes, taking urine samples and so on, just by suspicion. And they don't do that anymore. So I think we, are, we have gone really further than that drug policy reform would bring us. And now we have a government that's very good on the health side. Uh, there's a little less treatment, but they are progressive. In we have got heroin-assisted treatment. We will get substitution treatment for other serious addiction. That's a revolution of the drug treatment. So we will get substitution treatment for benzodiazepines and for central stimulants. Can help people using uh, problematic use of MDMA, amphetamines, and cocaine. So that is so important, but they are going to still criminalize in some way. But then uh, next um, year we will have an election and think we will get a conservative government that then will uh, give us a drug policy reform with decriminalization. And then I really hope that they will look into regulation. Not so that the, uh, I can use another drug than alcohol, but to um, to uh, prevent organized crime. The uh, substitution treatment for uh, central stimulants, it will be with 
dexamphetamine. It's ADHD medication, and um, it's four times the highest dose uh, ADHD, ADHD patient will get. So people will get legal amphetamine to function in their life and to quit their addiction. We're so excited about it, and it's starting up in May 2024. Is it an experimental project or, or it's, it's permanent? A randomized controlled study. It's a trial. Mm. And we work in drug user, so our, um, drug user representatives are working as uh, advisors for the whole program. And next year we will get even a more, uh, one study for even more people. So I think in two, three years it will roll out to those who need it. And we are seeing that a lot of people are using several drugs, mainly amphetamine. Now and then they use opiates. They are getting now into <coughs> opiate substitution treatment. So they are given a kind of addiction that they didn't, didn't have before. And then, of course, when they get uh, buprenorphine, methadone, something like that, then they use what they really need on, then they call it a misuse on the side. But then now we are really going to target and get the medication that they really need to have dignity in life, hmm. to stop criminal being, yeah, behavior and uh, hepatitis C, HIV and preventing overdose. It will be so much better substitution treatment, which is the best drug treatment we know. Could you do the same with cocaine? Yes, you can do the same with the cocaine. And I have read about uh, some experiment with coke paste and coke leaves pulverized, of course. And I think uh, this will, uh, uh, dexamphetamine will be good for some people using cocaine too because it's longer acting. So they can function better in the day. So maybe they should go from cocaine too. But we, sh we should use coca product products also. But the coca leaf, it should be legal. Yeah. It should really be legal. So we can stop uh, the violation of human rights of uh, indigenous people. So you, you have been fighting for this for a long time now. And I see so many people burning out in this struggle. What keeps you motivated? What keeps you fighting in this? The last 10 years, we have seen a really a <coughs> fracture of the drug policy. We really see change is going on and we want to inspire other countries to go in the same direction. And we also see that it's, it's a lot happening in the international scene. Uh, that is so amazing. I'm, I'm just so happy that I'm still here and that I can see the change is starting to develop that I just dreamed about uh, a few years ago.